The Khalid Thal War, also known as the Neutronic War, the Thousand Year War, or just the war by those fighting in it, was a devastating, centuries-long conflict between two of Skaro's indigenous societies, the Thals and another species that would, through the course of the war, be destined to become the merciless inhuman Daleks. Early sources referred to this other species as simply humanoid Daleks. Others suggest that this species were in fact the ancient Dals, but most sources concur that it was the Khaleds who would eventually become the Daleks, thanks to the sinister machinations of their chief scientist Davros. It is difficult to place the exact era in which the war took place, as it began in the distant past, and from Earth reckoning, it ended at some point between the 1st and 2nd centuries of the Common Era. The exact cause of the Thousand Year War is unknown. Neither the Khaleds nor the Thals had any recollection of why the war started. Both sides blamed the other for firing the first shot. As the war went on, it became a brutal genocidal war of attrition, with both societies expending the entirety of their resources, capital and population on the conflict. Both sides fought to destroy the other, and also to prevent the other from destroying them. Propaganda from each side of the conflict indicated that the only alternative to fighting was extermination. The First Doctor concluded from his analysis of Thal records and the Dalek city that the Thals had originally been oppressors of the Dalek forebears, suggesting that the Thals had built a dome over their capital city to make it indestructible, and that the embittered Khaleds had responded in kind, creating a cold war which later devolved into Armageddon, leaving only the two domed cities standing. However, other sources indicated that the forefathers of the Daleks had created an army of war machines and a neutron bomb to intimidate a nearby Thal settlement which detonated prematurely and sent Skaro into chaos, forcing the Daleks to retreat into their city and eventually adapt the war machines into travel machines to ensure the survival of their species. Exactly why the war began is somewhat of a redundant point, however, and there are many myths and tall tales that distort the history of Skaro. Needless to say, the war endured because both the Khaled and Thal societies were intensely militaristic, jingoistic and fascistic. Both sides committed horrendous atrocities, the use of biogenic and chemical weapons, the enslavement and torture of prisoners of war, the use of nuclear bombs and weaponized radiation, and all manner of awful things. As the war dragged on, Skaro's biosphere was devastated, and the surface of the planet became a hostile, radioactive wasteland, home to horrific, mutated monstrosities. The wastes of Skaro were also home to the Mutos, the cast-offs of both the Thal and Khaled societies who were banished to the wastelands for perceived imperfections in their physiology, caused by the radiation on the ravaged surface of the planet, and forced to scratch out a miserable existence among the barbed wire, bomb craters and petrified foliage. Conditions for the fighting soldiers on either side weren't much better, however, as their rations, morale and overall life expectancy were low, and as the war went on, both societies began to collapse and regress. A war that had once been fought with lasers and war machines eventually devolved into a war fought with biplanes, bows and arrows, bayonets, gas and minefields. Corpses were propped up in trenches to give the illusion that battlements were fully manned, and a shortage of men caused both sides to begin recruiting teenagers or even children to swell their ranks. Both sides eventually and independently reached the conclusion that the only way to win the war would be with a massive, unprecedented strike that would utterly annihilate the opposing side. The only alternative was mutual destruction. The Thals began diverting most of their resources to the construction of a massive rocket, which they hoped would end the war for good by obliterating the Khaled Dome. The Khaleds, on the other hand, were working on something far more sinister and deadly, the Dalek Project. The Khaled's chief scientist, Davros, began construction of a new kind of war machine, one designed to house the eventual end result of the Khaled's continued existence on their ravaged homeworld. Davros's underling Shan had previously concluded that, if the Khaled's continued on this path, they would eventually become hideously mutated creatures, no longer humanoid, and she suggested the radical idea of harnessing this fate rather than attempting to avoid it, influencing the mutations of their species so that they could survive in the wastes of Skaro by feeding on radiation. Shan was later killed by Davros, who seized her research, but at some point after finalising the designs for the initial Dalek prototype, he was injured by a Thal attack on his laboratory, forcing him to enhance his body with cybernetics, which in turn gave him a fresh wave of ideas to incorporate into his Dalek plan. Sequestering the Khaled scientific elite in a hidden bunker far from the Khaled Dome, Davros continued his work on the Daleks, intending on programming them with conditioning that suppressed all emotions except hate, making them the ultimate xenophobic killing machines. The Time Lords, fearing that the Daleks would one day become an intergalactic scourge that could threaten even them, recruited the Fourth Doctor to interfere in the Daleks' development, and hoped that he would be able to alter their origin in order to make them less aggressive creatures. The Doctor met Davros, who was at that point in the process of breeding a whole army of Khaled mutants, and was adding the finishing touches to his third iteration of the travel machine design. Davros was keenly interested in the Doctor's nature not only as an alien, but also a time traveller, and hoped to gain knowledge about the Daleks' future from him. 
The Doctor escaped and warned the Khalid government about Davros' sinister plans, but he could do nothing to prevent Davros from betraying his own people by leaking vital information to the Thals, which allowed them to launch their rockets and utterly obliterate the Khalid city. He then unleashed his Daleks on the Thal Dome, wiping out the majority of the population of Skaro in a single night. Davros underestimated his creations, however, and upon realising that they had everything they needed to perpetuate themselves, they turned on Davros, exterminating the last of his Khalid scientists before turning their weapons on Davros himself. In the meantime, the Doctor had managed to interfere with operations in the bunker, sabotaging a Dalek breeding farm and collapsing the entrance to the facility, entombing the Daleks within. Despite these efforts, the Doctor lamented that he had perhaps only set the Daleks back by around a thousand years, and that they would inevitably emerge and establish themselves as a universal threat. In the meantime, however, the surviving Thals and Musos fled to elsewhere on Skaro to establish a new society, far from the Dalek bunker and the ruined cities that surrounded it. After thousands of years of fighting, the Khalid Thal War was finally over, but no side could claim victory, as both societies had been reduced to charred rubble. The Khalids had been completely eradicated, with Davros allegedly being the only survivor. The Thal survivors eventually established settlements elsewhere on the planet, but they forgot most of their history and became pacifist farmers in defiance of their ancestors' brutality. There were reports of further conflicts between Daleks and Thals, as well as possible conflicts between Daleks and other mutated species on the planet, before the Daleks detonated a neutronic bomb that destroyed anything that still lived in visual range of their bunker, which they had expanded into a city that they were now confined to. Despite the relative obscurity of the Khalid Thal War, its legacy was well known throughout the universe as the Daleks would eventually expand their regime beyond Skara and become an intergalactic scourge just as the Time Lords feared. Davros, having survived the Dalek attack thanks to his backup life support system, would eventually be rescued by the Daleks, and while the Thals were able to hold Skara as their homeworld for a time, the Daleks would later take it back, forcing them to flee to other worlds, establishing colonies such as New Davius while continuing the fight against the Daleks. While the Doctor initially appeared to have failed in his mission, he was at least able to give the Thals some breathing room to recover from the horrors of the Thousand Year War and begin again. Subsequently, the Twelfth Doctor would travel back in time and encounter Davos as a child, saving him from a minefield and teaching him the value of mercy. While this didn't do anything to alter Davros' future, it did at least cause Davros to teach his Daleks the concept of mercy, even if they do not accept it, and the ramifications of this regarding the future of the Dalek race is yet to be determined. As it stands, however, the Khalid Dal War is a testament to the futility of conflict, and a cautionary tale on the horrors of war. There are few examples in the history of the universe of wars that are more bloody or horrific than the Thousand Year War on Skara, and to make matters worse, this apocalyptic genocidal conflict birthed one of the universe's most hateful, dangerous and evil creatures, the Daleks. Hello, Dalek. Emergency! remember that? Shan was a member of the Khalid scientific elite in the waning years of the Khalid Thal War on Skara. She was a colleague and friend of then coordinator Davros, and the two would often discuss the war, scientific projects, and matters concerning Khalid society. Shan appeared to be more naive regarding the true nature of the war than Davros was, as she was ignorant of the fact that Khalid food pills were made using processed corpses, and appeared to hold out some hope that the Khalid race could survive the war, while Davros seemed certain that the conflict would end in mutual annihilation of both sides. As a result, Shan was less interested in developing weapons for the Khalids, and instead researched and compiled a paper discussing the ruined biosphere of the planet, suggesting several solutions that could be put forward to limit the use of biogenic, chemical, and radioactive weapons weapons in the conflict to ensure that once the war was won, the Khalids would still have a planet worth living on once the dust had settled. These ideas were considered but ultimately rejected by the Khalid military, forcing Shan to approach the problem from a new, radical angle. Rather than trying to prevent the cause of the problem, Shan instead began to consider ways in which the Khalids themselves could adapt to survive in a post-war world, assuming that once the Thals were annihilated, Skara would be little more than a radioactive wasteland. She wrote a new paper, putting forward a proposal that she called the Dalek Solution. This caught the attention of Davros, who was impressed by Shan's work but believed that it could be taken even further. Initially, Shan supported Davros in the early Dalek experiments, believing that she was working for the benefit of the Khalid race as a whole. However, she was disgusted at the utter lack of morality that Davros showed during the first phase of the Dalek project, and objected to his idea of suppressing all emotions in the new Dalek creatures except hate. In response, Davros declared her a traitor and had her executed. This not only removed a potential rogue element in the ranks of Davros' scientific elite, but it also allowed Davros to claim full ownership of the Dalek idea, taking it further than Shan had ever considered, and corrupting it in ways that she would have found utterly atrocious. 
Centuries later, long after the end of the Kaladvar War, Davros recalled Shan, and though his memories were significantly corrupted, historian Lorraine Baines, a Dalek apologist who revered Davros for his scientific genius, was able to extract information about Shan from him through a series of interviews, in which she learned that Shan was not only a colleague of Davros, but also a potential lover. It appeared that Davros had feelings for Shan, and was enraged by her relationship with another Kaled, Councillor Valron. Baines also suggested that it was this jealousy that caused Davros to execute Shan, but Davros insisted that the death of Shan was simply a natural process, survival of the fittest in the scientific world, arguing that had he not killed her, Shan would have eventually surpassed Davros and taken his place as head of the scientific elite. This revelation caused Baines to begin to see Davros for the monster that he truly is. While Shan's role in Davros's history is potentially controversial, there are also a lot of mysteries and unanswered questions surrounding her past. Indeed, some have suggested that Shan never actually existed, and that Davros's memories of her were simply a result of malfunctions in his life support system. Perhaps Perhaps Shan was a metaphor for Davros' own conscience, which he smothered during the process of creating the Daleks to prevent his guilt from corrupting the project. Perhaps Davros invented Shan during his interviews with Baines in order to manipulate her. But if Shan did exist, then she was perhaps one of the only people in the universe that Davros genuinely cared for, making his betrayal and execution of her all the more deplorable, illustrating Davros' true nature as a heartless, murderous tyrant. The real controversy surrounding Shan is that, if she did exist, then she is technically the true creator of the Daleks, not Davros. Davros. While Davros carried her ideas forward, corrupted them and ultimately made them reality, the initial spark of inspiration for the creation of the Daleks came from Shan, not Davros. What? Each one has one of these four Doctor Who action games, three of these stand-up figures, and a secret message from the Time Lord. Security Commander Nida was a member of the Khaled military elite in the waning days of the Thousand Year War between the Khaleds and the Thals for Dominion of Ascara. Ruthless, pragmatic and fiercely loyal, Nida worked his way up the ranks of the Khaled military before securing the position of Operations Lieutenant, assisting Davros with all manner of tasks, ranging from coordinating tactical bombardments on Thal targets to requisitioning resources from the Khaled military for use in Davros' experiments. Initially, Nida's interactions with Davros took place exclusively over the Khaled City's communication systems, but at some point following Davros' accident, the chief scientist was captured by the Thals and held prisoner in their dome, and Nida personally led the mission to rescue him. When he was safely back in the Khaled dome, Davros personally asked for Nida, leading to the two meeting in person for the first time. Nida confessed that he was an admirer of Davros' scientific work, and Davros saw potential in him, promoting him from lieutenant to security commander and installing Nida as his right-hand man. Nida became Davros' personal aide and most trusted associate, and he obeyed orders without question. As Davros' development of the Daleks reached its final stages and his grip on the Khaled scientific elite tightened, Nida became a feared figure throughout Khaled society. As Davros' aide, Nida was the eyes and ears of the most powerful Khaled on Skaro during the latter months of the war, and he was perhaps the only individual who Davros made privy to the full extent of his plans. When the Fourth Doctor and Harry Sullivan arrived in the Khaled bunker, Nida overruled General Ravon and took the aliens as prisoners, and subsequently reported their escape to the Khaled Dome to Davros. When Davros made the journey to the Thal Dome, intent on betraying his people to the Thals to remove their opposition to the Dalek project, Nida accompanied him, and bore witness to Davros' betrayal of the Khaleds, willingly handing over the formula that would allow the Thals to dissolve the protective shell over the Khaled city and wipe out the majority of his species, save for those in the bunker. Following this, Nida pretended to have doubts about Davros' plan in order to gain the trust of Garmin, the leader of a growing dissident movement within the staff of the Khaled bunker who wanted to halt Davros' experiments and remove the aspects of Dalek conditioning that would make the new creatures totally ruthless and evil. Garmin believed Nida's ruse and gave him the names of those who harboured doubts about Davros' plan, allowing Nida to round them up and imprison them. He also recaptured the Doctor, Harry and Sarah Jane, and entered Davros' laboratory just in time to save him from being threatened by the Doctor into giving the order to destroy the Dalek embryos. However, the Doctor and his companions were eventually able to escape, and they took Nida hostage, forcing him to break into Davros' office and destroy the recording that Davros had taken of the Doctor's testimony of future Dalek defeats, preventing Davros from altering history in favour of the Daleks. Nida later fled and returned to Davros' side, and watched as he ordered the extermination of the Khaleds who had plotted against him. However, the Daleks began to rebel against Davros, seeing their creator as inferior and beginning the manufacture of new Daleks without his consent. Davros ordered Nida to 
shut down the production line, and Nida, as always, obeyed Davros without question. This act would prove to be his undoing, however, as the Daleks' self-defense programming kicked in and they immediately exterminated him. Second only to Davros himself, Nida was without a doubt one of the most ruthless and merciless Khalids to ever live. While he preferred a more direct, military-focused approach compared to Davros's more subtle scheming, this, if anything, made the two an almost unstoppable team, allowing them to subvert and exploit the machinations of Khalid society to give the scientific elite complete control over the Khalid race in the latter days of the war. Nida proved that he was unwaveringly faithful to Davros to the bitter end, even allowing the destruction of his own species in order to further Davros's plans, and he showed a total loyalty to Davros, even bordering on dependency. Nida refused to believe any statement or notion presented to him that did not conform with Davros's will, and despite his hardened military attitude, he demonstrated a keen cunning, though he recognised his subordinate status to Davros's intelligence and followed him to the end. Peter Miles, the actor who played Nida in Genesis of the Daleks, based his performance primarily on Heinrich Himmler, stating that he was fascinated by the twisted mentality of men who were so corrupted by power that they were able to deceive themselves into believing that they are acting for the greater good, despite the horrendous atrocities they commit. This essentially sums Nida up perfectly. He is the ultimate embodiment of dogmatic, ruthless fascism, and was likely a contributing factor in Davros's decision to condition the Daleks to forego mercy and ethics and obey orders without question. Inevitably, however, Nida's blind devotion and weak-minded submission to Davros's fascist regime was his downfall, and he ironically ended up becoming one of the first victims of the Daleks' long and brutal campaign to eradicate all non-Dalek life in the universe. We are renewed. We are more powerful. A notable and iconic aspect of Davros's design is his electronic eye, which he uses to replace his damaged eyesight following his injuries caused by a Thal attack on his bunker during the Thousand Year War. Davros's use of a singular electronic optical system mirrors his creation's eye stalk lens, and it is certain that Davros's acquisition of his electronic eye gave him several ideas to incorporate into his Dalek creatures. In fact, Davros's electronic eye bears a striking resemblance to the bright blue eye stalk lights used by the Daleks during the Time War era. Speaking of the appearance of Davros's eye, its exact look and design has changed a lot over the years. Originally, Davros's eye appeared to be a metal housing containing a blue electronic pupil. However, as time went on, the metal part of the eye appeared to disappear, and the eye itself became much larger, eventually taking up the majority of Davros's forehead. In some instances, the eye appeared to have a pupil, whereas in others it was simply a shapeless mass of blue within the eye, possibly indicating that Davros could switch to different modes of vision depending on the situation. According to Davros, the electronic eye enhanced his vision in several ways, allowing him to detect tiny changes in the heartbeat or breathing rhythm of humanoids near to him, allowing him an uncanny ability to tell when others are lying. Davros was also capable of firing bolts of lightning from his electronic eye in order to incapacitate his enemies, which he did to Orsini during his attempted assassination of the so-called Great Healer on Necros. After acquiring his robot hand, Davros's dependence on his eye as a weapon diminished, and by the time of the Time War, Davros's eye had once again reduced in size. Davros had, at some point, also taken measures to restore his original eyes, granting him the limited ability to see with his own eyes again, during which time he would deactivate his electronic eye. However, Davros still relied on his eye, as his life support system lacked sufficient energy to maintain his original vision for long. It would appear that his electronic eye was wired into Davros's entire nervous system, as he reacted with visible pain when Missy poked him in the eye during a gambit on Skara. Davros's electronic eye is not only a distinctive and recognisable aspect of Davros's character design, it also provides a visual link between the creator and his creations, as through his singular blue eye, Davros sees the universe in much the same way as his Daleks do. Despite initially being installed as a means of supplementing his damaged sight, Davros came to depend on his eye, and used it even after the capability of seeing through his regular eyes had been restored, illustrating how he consciously rejected his humanoid form and knowingly embraced the way of the Daleks by maintaining the cybernetics and technology that made him more like them. Davros, if you had created a virus in your laboratory, something contagious and infectious that killed on contact, a virus that would destroy all other forms of life. Would you allow its use? Yes. Yes. To hold in my hand a capsule that contained such power. To know that life and death on such a scale was my choice. To know that the tiny pressure on my thumb, enough to break the glass, would end 
everything. Yes. I would do it. That power would set me up above the gods. And through the Daleks, I shall have that power! Ever since he betrayed his own people by creating the Daleks, Davros has coveted the position of supreme leader of the Empire that his children created. Despite being murdered by his Daleks not long after their initial activation, Davros has always considered them to be his children, despite the many times that they have imprisoned or abused him. Even at points in his life when it seemed as though he had abandoned his creations altogether, such as during the Juggernaut program, or earlier during his time working for TAI, Davros has always secretly held the desire to lead his creations in their conquest of the universe, to receive praise from them, and to use them to further his own goal of causing misery and suffering throughout the universe. However, in pursuing this goal of usurping the Dalek Emperor and taking control of the Dalek race, Davros unwittingly set himself down a path that would almost destroy him entirely, not physically, but psychologically. Davros was finally able to achieve his dream of becoming Emperor Dalek when he created his Imperial Dalek faction, which led to the Dalek Civil War between Daleks loyal to Davros and Daleks loyal to the Dalek Supreme. During this war, Davros held the title of Dalek Emperor, though his reign over the Imperial Daleks would come to an end at the hands of the Seventh Doctor, who tricked Davros into using the Hand of Omega, a Time Lord's stellar manipulator, which devastated Scaro and destroyed the Dalek Mothership, forcing Davros to flee in an escape pod. At the apparent culmination of his grand plan, his scheme had failed, and the Emperor of the Imperial Daleks was left drifting alone in space. Davros would eventually find his way back to civilization, being rescued by spacers who he later murdered, and spending some time on the planet Azimuth, and was later held captive by the race of Lemuria, who enacted punishment on Davros for his crimes and left him drifting in space once again. His mind weakened, Davros looked to his past and recalled the idea for a virus that could destroy all life, the hypothetical virus suggested by the Fourth Doctor during his dialogue with Davros on Scaro before the Daleks were first unleashed. Davros would go on to create this virus, as well as a new faction of Daleks, but in the process his mind became increasingly affected by another personality, that of the Dalek Emperor. Davros and the Dalek Emperor persona, either a manifestation of Dalek leadership or a symptom of Davros' insanity, fought an intense internal battle, which was further complicated by the interference of the Eighth Doctor, who foiled Davros' plans to unleash the virus by convincing the Daleks that Davros was no longer a capable leader. The Dalek Emperor persona took control, and Davros was left as an echo of his former self, as the Dalek Emperor occupied his body and led the new Dalek faction. Some accounts refer to this as one of the many deaths of Davros, but like all his other supposed demises, Davros was able to cheat this death by wrestling control of his body back from the Dalek Emperor persona. The advent of the Time War may have assisted Davros in his plight, as there were several Dalek Emperors active in the prelude to the war, including the Restoration Emperor, who allegedly rose from the ashes of the Imperial Dalek faction alongside the Dalek Prime Strategist, who according to some accounts, would later take up the mantle of Dalek Emperor himself. A new Dalek Emperor would also be resurrected over Koska in the Gulf of Ethon during the Time War by the Dalek Time Strategist, which coincidentally used versions of Davros from across the multiverse to manifest a physical form for the Dalek Emperor, allowing him to return to the universe and lead the Daleks once again. The existence of these other Emperors explains why Davros was seemingly cleansed of the Dalek Emperor persona during the first year of the Time War, despite being resurrected himself during the same scheme as an amalgamation of his different forms from across the multiverse, Davros expressed disgust and rage at the fact that the Dalek Emperor had also been created to supplant him, illustrating how little Davros had learned from his experience as the Dalek Emperor. The fact that there are so many conflicting accounts of what happened to Davros after the events of Remembrance of the Daleks and the Time War, as well as even more conflicting accounts of Davros's role in the Time War itself, is a testament to just how entangled and messy the Dalek timeline had become in the prelude to the Time War, likely one of the main reasons for the outbreak of the war itself. Davros would be supposedly killed for the final time in the first year of the war, though Dalek Khan later ensured that he survived, and the rest is history. What I give you the Daleks. At the conclusion of Revelation of the Daleks, Davros is taken back to Skaro by the Daleks to stand trial, allegedly for his crimes against the Dalek race. However, when we next see Davros in Remembrance of the Daleks, he has managed to install himself as Emperor of the Imperial Dalek faction. Clearly something significant went down at Davros's trial that caused a serious shake-up of the Dalek leadership. 
eventually leading to a civil war between Daleks loyal to Davros and Daleks loyal to the Dalek Supreme. So what happened at the trial? How did Davros go from prisoner standing trial to emperor of his own Dalek faction? Well, we're not exactly sure. The trial of Davros has been depicted several times across lots of different stories, and all of these accounts contradict each other. So today, we are going to be looking at the various accounts of Davros's trial to see if we can figure out what exactly happened here. But first, a bit of backstory. Davros's capture, Necros and Lethe. During the events of Revelation of the Daleks, Davros attempts to create a new race of Daleks on the planet Necros, using human tissue to create an army of Daleks loyal only to him. Unfortunately for Davros, the Dalek Empire located and captured him, destroying many of his Imperial Daleks and taking him aboard a spaceship, intending on returning him to Skaro to stand trial for crimes against the Daleks. However, that spaceship would later suffer damage, either due to sabotage, an accident or an attack, and crash on the planet Lethe. All of the Daleks aboard perished apart from two of Davros's Necros Daleks, and Davros himself would emerge from the crash terribly wounded and with damage to his life support chair. However, a human colony on Lethe would give him the resources he needed to continue his nefarious plans. By infiltrating the colony and hijacking the recovery of mechanoids found buried on the planet, Davros would create the Juggernaut program, using human flesh and mechanoid technology to create a race of Dalek killers. However, the Daleks would once again locate Davros with help from the Sixth Doctor and Mel, and this time they would successfully take him to Skaro to stand trial. While Davros's trial is entrenched in Dalek lore, being the defining moment where the post novellan recovery period ends and the early days of the Imperial Renegade Dalek Civil War begins, there is no single definitive version of the trial itself. Many different, often contradictory accounts of the trial have been written over the years, from novels, comics and audios, none of which are without fault, but all of them are interesting. So let's take a look at the four main accounts of Davros's trial. Account 1. Davros's Execution one of the earliest accounts of Davros's trial establishes that he was brought before the Supreme Council of Daleks, which included the highest ranking Black Daleks, and was allowed to speak in his defence. However, after giving an impassioned speech about how it was his destiny to rule the Daleks, attempting to sway members of the Council to join him, he was cut off by the Black Dalek. Davros denounced the trial and declared that the Daleks were doomed without him, but they nonetheless sentenced him to death. However, there were some among the Supreme Council and the Dalek Scientific Division who wanted to use Davros's intellect for their own purposes, so they attempted a rescue mission. The Black Dalek denounced these Daleks as traitors, weeding out and exterminating any Daleks within the regime who were loyal to Davros. Davros himself was then placed in a matter transmitter set to a broad beam, designed to disperse the Dalek creator's atoms across the universe, killing him once and for all, or so it seemed. The account then details an alternate version of events in which the Black Dalek of the Supreme Council goes on to become the Dalek Emperor seen in The Evil of the Daleks, meeting its final end, and the end of the Dalek race as a whole, at the hands of the Second Doctor. However, since this contradicts other chronologies of the Dalek timeline, the validity of this account, including the description of Davros's trial, is therefore called into question, and it is generally understood that this account of the trial has been disproven by subsequent sources detailing Davros's later history, specifically the events of Remembrance of the Daleks, and the later events of Nuhu. However, there are also alternate versions of this account, one in which Davros is not executed, but is instead lost in space, left adrift for centuries before being found by passing spacers. Yet another version of this account claims that Davros not only survived his execution, but was able to escape Skaro with several of his Dalek supporters, founding the Imperial Dalek faction, before eventually returning to Skaro with an invasion army, pushing the now renegade Daleks off their homeworld. Account 2. The Golden Emperor. Another similar account details the trial of Davros being undertaken by none other than the Gold Dalek Emperor, who according to some sources is the original Dalek Prime. Like in the previous account, Davros is allowed to speak at his trial and manages to sway some high-ranking scientist Daleks to his cause, shaking the resolve of the Emperor and causing him to order Davros's extermination. However, at the last moment, the Sixth Doctor intervened in the trial and rescued Davros, simultaneously sowing the seeds for his plans to acquire the Hand of Omega at the behest of his future incarnation. Davros then travelled to Spyridon, using the Dalek army frozen there to create an army of Imperial Daleks based on adapted versions of his earlier Necros designs and was pursued by the Supreme Dalek accompanied by a platoon of Daleks, including a Psych Dalek and a Special Weapons Dalek, and the Seventh Doctor, who was forced to help the Daleks track Davros down as they had captured Absalom Dark and several more of his associates. Davros escaped the battle but was injured in the process, forcing him to build himself a new chair, which doubled as his Emperor Dalek throne. Account 3. I, Davros 
Another account of Davros's trial seemingly came from Davros himself, and the validity of this account should be questioned based on that fact alone. This version of the trial indicates that the entire event was not a trial at all, but simply a test that the Daleks had devised to see if Davros could competently resolve the schism that had arisen in the Dalek Empire since their defeat in the Mavellum War. Davros gave an account of his past, attempting to convince the Daleks that he was fit to lead them, and eventually passed the test, being declared Emperor of the Daleks. This version of the story stands in contrast to earlier tellings, and also does not account for the creation of the renegade Dalek faction. Indeed, Davros' own account of the trial casts the Daleks in the role of pathetic children seeking his guidance, casting further doubt on the validity of his version of the trial. There is another interesting alternate version of this particular account, which claims that Davros was tested via the trial and appointed as Dalek Emperor, but later lost himself completely to that persona, calling himself the Dalek Emperor, acting like a standard Dalek, and even donning a casing similar to that of the Dalek Prime. However, this version of the trial, much like the first one, has been seemingly disproven by subsequent revelations. A similar issue would afflict Davros in the years following the destruction of Skaro and the conclusion of the Imperial Renegade Dalek Civil War, as Davros would fight a bitter internal battle between his own mind and the persona of the Dalek Emperor, but again, the exact outcomes of these events are unclear. Account 4. The Thal Interference Another fourth account of the trial suggests that Davros encountered a Thal stealth agent, Lorene, while en route to Skaro for his trial. Using a stealth suit that made her invisible to Dalek scanners, Lorene questioned Davros and attempted to find his good side, believing that she had succeeded when he gave her a capsule containing an aggressive sample of the Mavellan virus, ordering her to release it during his trial to destroy the Daleks. When Davros' trial began, the Dalek Prime was not present, but the Supreme Dalek intended on installing itself as Dalek Emperor once Davros was exterminated. However, Davros betrayed Lorene by revealing her presence to the Daleks, who exterminated her. Impressed by this show of loyalty to them, the Daleks declared Davros their Emperor instead of the Black Dalek, who fled Skara with his followers while Davros established his Imperial faction. Although all of these accounts of Davros' trial contain some modicum of truth, it is impossible to tell which is the correct version of the story. There are some versions of these accounts which have seemingly been disproven, but the fact that there are so many contradictory retellings of the same event make it difficult to determine the exact details. Perhaps each version of the trial is separately played out in different timelines, and the precise events of Davros' trial have been rewritten many times over the years by the unstable Dalek timeline. The Don't forget to click below to subscribe to Dalek Bumps.